Someone left a comment a couple of weeks ago saying they couldn't figure out how to get an image onto their model. Now, this is one of the easiest things to do in Blender, so I thought I'd just find them a tutorial to do it. And much to my surprise, I couldn't find a good one either. So in this video, we're going to cover how to get an image texture from your hard drive onto your model. And I'll also show you how you can use textures to control the bumpiness and shininess of your model. Now, it may be that you already have your own model and your own textures. If that's the case, follow along using your own files. But if you don't, you're welcome to go and download the little monster dude from the thumbnail from my Gumroad page. There'll be a link in the description. This little monster was made with my Creature Kitbash add-on, so if you want to support the channel, there'll be a link in the description to purchase that. But this critter is available completely for free, and you're welcome to use him in any other projects. Once you download the file, unzip it onto your computer somewhere. You should have the Blender file as well as a textures folder with several images in it. If you open up the Blender file, you'll see our little eyeball monster. Everything will be grey because he doesn't have any textures assigned yet. So let's give him one. Select the body either in the viewport or in the outliner. Up the top, pick the shading workspace. This will change around our interface so that we get access to some more advanced tools. You can get back to the previous view by clicking the layout workspace. This window here is the shader editor. You can see we have two nodes in here. One is the principled BSDF, which is a very fancy way of saying it's a shader. The other is the material output. This little guy has some more advanced features which we won't be covering in this tutorial. Just know that you need one for your shader to appear in the viewport. If you disconnect the wire here, everything will vanish. So make sure that this stays connected. The most important options here are base color, roughness, and normal. But right now, all we care about is the base color. If you change the base color, the model will update to that color. Just as a side note here, if you jump back to the layout workspace, that color will go back to its default gray. That's because the layout workspace is set to solid mode by default. Sometimes your textures and materials can get extremely complicated and having to display them all the time can slow Blender down. So by default, we start in solid mode to keep the software running fast as possible. If you want to be able to see your materials in the layout workspace, you can change that either at the top right menu here or you can use the pie menu. The shortcut for this is the Z key, and again, choose Material Preview. Now you'll see that the color appears on the monster. Back in the shading workspace, you can use the base color to change the monster's color to anything we want, but it affects the entire body. If we want different colors in different places, we need to use an image texture. Thankfully, I have one prepared that you can use. We add texture nodes similar to how we add objects in the viewport through the Shift A shortcut. This menu is also available at the top of the shader editor under the add menu. We want the texture and the image texture. You can move the node around or just left click to drop it. There's also a search menu. If you start typing image into this, the first option will be image texture. Once you learn the name of a bunch of different nodes, this search menu can be a lot faster for finding what you're looking for rather than navigating the menu. If we plug the color output from the image texture into the base color on the shader, the eyeball monster will turn black. This indicates that we haven't yet loaded in a texture. So click the open button on the image texture, navigate to where you save the texture folder and choose the eyeball monster underscore diffuse .png file. If you change the display to thumbnail, it's the green image. Color textures can go by several different names. They can just be color, they can be base color, they can be diffuse, or they can be albedo. Now, technically there is some subtle differences between these, but that's getting into some pretty technical stuff. Double clicking the image will load it in and the monster will turn green with yellow wings and gray claws. There's another way that we can load this same image texture. If I delete this image texture node, I can then go to the texture folder on my hard drive and then click and drag the same file into the shader editor. And then again, plug it into the color wire. What's nice about this method is that you can load several images this way. So now I've loaded in the roughness texture and a normal texture. If you want to preview any of these, you can use the shortcut Control, Shift and left click and then click on any of the image textures. The roughness texture is a black and white image while the normal is mostly blue. You could also preview the diffuse texture the same way. Control, Shift click on the BSDF shader to view the overall shader again. We can use the roughness slider to control how shiny the character is. Lower the roughness makes him more shiny and wet looking. Just like with the base color, this slider controls the shininess across the whole model. If we want to have some variation in this shininess, we need to use our image texture. So just like with the color, plug the roughness texture output into the roughness input on the shader. Now the monster has some variation in how shiny he is. Finally, we have the normal texture. The normal texture controls how bumpy a surface looks and it's kind of a special texture inside Blender. 
we can't just plug the texture into the normal slot on the shader, otherwise we get this weird rendering glitch. We need to specifically tell Blender this is a normal map so that it works properly. To do this, disconnect the texture. You can do this with the shortcut Control plus right click and drag to cut the wire. Now we need to create a normal map node, which can be found under Add, Vector, Normal Map. Now we can plug the texture into the normal map node and then connect the normal output into the normal input on the shader. If you get some strange results from the normal map here, don't panic. Blender may have set up one of your settings incorrectly. If we look at the diffuse texture, we can see that the color space is set to sRGB. The RGB stands for red, green, and blue. In other words, color. If we go to the roughness map, which we know is a black and white image, we can see that its color space is set to non-color. This is something that the latest versions of Blender do. They automatically set our color space. Earlier versions of Blender just set everything to sRGB by default. If you're using an earlier version of Blender, it's possible the color space on both your roughness and normal map are set incorrectly. So if your roughness map is set to sRGB, set it to non-color. You should notice a fairly small change in how shiny the character is. The normal map gets a little confusing. It's mostly a blue image, which is obviously a color, so naturally you'd think it should be set to sRGB. But under the hood, Blender is actually converting these colors into numbers, and then using those numbers to figure out how high or low the bumpy detail needs to be. Because of this, we actually need to set the normal map to non-color, and that should get rid of any weird artifacts. Setting up all these textures does take some time, so let me show you a really quick way of doing all of this in only a couple of clicks. I'm going to delete all of the textures that we've just created. I'll then select the BSDF shader and use the shortcut Control shift t This will open our browser again, and if you select all the textures at once and press the Import button, your material will be automatically set up, with the added bonus that the roughness and normal maps will be set to non-color by default. The names of the files are really important here, so you will need to have them named something like underscore diffuse, underscore normal, or underscore roughness for this setup to work. No doubt you'll have noticed these extra mapping nodes that have been created. These are really useful when setting up materials for things like grounds or brick walls. For our little monster dude though, they're not really doing anything for us, so you can feel free to ignore them for now. In this tutorial I showed you how you can add pre-made textures to your objects, but if you want to learn how you can paint your own textures, Jump into this video next.